<laughs> going well <laughs> tonight, isn't it? Um, <laughs> just said there's no invite being sent at the moment. She said she can't find it. Who's that? Um, Sandra said she can't find her invite. So I've just sent it again this minute. Yeah, I've just said you did send it again. Sent it to a council well. Refresh your emails, Sandra. I'll give them a minute and then we'll uh, kick off. <clears throat> Have we got any public participation tonight, Malcolm? Uh, no, the only question that we have tonight, I will be, will be, will be, will be taking, giving, okay, uh, and that. Uh, Steph's arrived. Yes, Steph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Right, we're we're only two short now. That's Sandra and iPad. Hi, Steph. Yeah, I'm counting the squares on my screen. It's like, don't record that bit, please. Right. Um, right. We'll give one more minute and then we'll start. Okay. Because that's five past seven, which is who seven o'clock somewhere. Who are we missing? Sandra and um, Alan. Alan. Alan, yes. Sent them both the Zoom invite again just a few minutes ago. So I've just posted the link again on WhatsApp as well. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Somebody send them a message if yeah. you've got a minute, please. Somebody do that. I, I put it on WhatsApp already, Malcolm. Oh, okay, Bill, I'll do. Okay. Right. Right, we're going to start. Okay. Sandra's just joining us. Oh, well, I'll wait for Sandra to join. And, um... Alan here yet? No. 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 I'll send you one. Yeah, good girl. Excellent. Sandra joined. Uh, yes, she has. Right then, but it's just right. she's not connect. It's just not that the connection isn't coming through yet. Just, just quite yet. Okay. Oh, I tell you what. I think. Oh. Uh, hello, Sandra. Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I... Okay. You sure that she's there? Because I thought he had to work tonight. No, he is here. He is here. Where? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, right, uh, we're going to start. Okay, uh, good evening, uh, members uh, of the council, officers, and members of public who are watching this uh, on YouTube. Uh, we will start the meeting uh, by uh, doing the roll call. Uh, if you could say present as I give out your name and then mute your mic until uh, you request to speak on something. Councillor Mark Clark. Uh, present, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Rebecca Clark. Present, Chairman. Councillor Sean Cullen. Present Chairman. Councillor Sandra Delamere. Present Chairman. Uh, Councillor Philip Dowd. Present Chairman. Uh, Councillor Matthew Kitcher. Present Chairman. Councillor Simon Lodge. Present Chairman. Councillor Stephanie Osborne. Present Chairman. Councillor Melody Roberts. Present Chairman. Councillor Alex Wade. Present Chairman. Uh, as Councillor uh, Alan Fair be able to join us yet? No, no. Mr. Well, Chairman. Uh, well, hopefully he will soon. I, Malcolm Wade, under Chairman, am here. Right. Uh, before we start, uh, we'll have a moment's silence to to consider the gravity of the situation we're in and to prepare ourselves for the meeting of the council. Okay, that'll do. Apologies, please. Have we had any? No. 
Okay. We'll now go to well, Alan Fared if he doesn't make it. We'll now go to item two, which is declarations of interest and dispensations. To know any declaration of interest made by members in connection with agenda item, members to specify the nature of the interest. B, to receive any written requests for dispensations, disclosable purely interests, and C, to grant any requests for dispensations as appropriate. Do we have any of those uh, at the moment, Tracy? You're, you're muted. I can't hear you. Hello? Mr. Chairman, just while you're uh, talking, could you just move the microphone gently away from your mouth? You're popping, you're popping quite a bit. That's it. Is that better? Yeah, it is. Yeah, thanks. Right. Uh, uh, Alex, you, you're on RTS. Um, we will go through the planning minutes, and obviously there's no discussion. So any councillors who didn't comment on a planning application, I believe, um, including such as Councillor Sean Collin, because Tesco's were on there, uh, might be worth just noting it uh, purely because we'll discuss it, we'll be confirming the planning minutes, uh, and there were several declarations of, of interest for there. So any of the planning declarations uh, that were passed to me a week or so ago uh, would probably also be in play here. Okay, so, um, Sean, you're going to declare a, a, an interest on that then? Yeah, I declare an interest in um, one of the plan applications was relating to the Tesco, uh, little Tesco's, and obviously being a Tesco employee, yeah. I decided it wasn't appropriate for me to comment on that application. Well done, that's correct. Okay, no more, no more other uh, items for this item. So we've got item three, which is the community safety update to receive an update from the police. Uh, have we had one, Tracy? No, we haven't received. We haven't had one. Okay, well, I'm sure they're, they're very busy uh, policing the new COVID restrictions, <laughs> or, or not, as the case may be. But um, okay, not to worry. I know that uh, our, our local police force are working hard to protect everybody. Uh, so um, we now go to item four, which is the minutes to consider and confirm the minutes of the virtual meeting of the council held on the 27th of August, uh, pages five to 14 in your agenda. I will just go to that. I will do it page by page. If anybody has an item on a particular page they want to bring to my attention, please sing out. So uh, page five. Page six. Page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, and page thirteen. That was a very busy meeting. Is everybody uh, happy that that is a true record? Can I have some responses, please? Agreed. Every happy that? Thumbs up? Agreed. Okay. Thank you very much, members. Right. I will sign the minutes uh, at an appropriate time. But I've virtually signed them now. <laughs> if you pardon the expression. <laughs> okay. We now go to item five, which is the chairman's announcements. And this, uh, this, this meeting... I actually don't have any, but I, I will uh, make an announcement on behalf of the District Council. You may or may not be aware that the District Council has today uh, uh, published uh, on social, social media and, and certainly by email uh, and, and asked us to spread this amount about the new NHS Test and Trace app. Uh, uh, and um, if uh, it is a good thing to do, I know not everybody likes having apps on their phone, particularly things like this, but it is something that may help the test and trace system because we know at the moment the test and trace system in the UK is poorly organised and not appropriate. Anything that we can do to help that by using things like this could well be of benefit for us. But I mentioned that as a, uh, in passing that that is something that uh, I have personally done. Uh, and shown some leadership in that and also promoted through my council page. And um, welcome Councillor Fairhead. Good evening, Chairman. I'm glad you're with us. Yeah, I don't know why, but the, the screen was showing that it was just waiting, waiting, uh, join, it'll be joined soon. But I'm here Well, now. it's very good to see you. Thank you. 
Right, we now go to the next item, which is report by county and district members. Do we have anything from uh, Councillor McAvoy? Okay, well, um, uh, I have one. Interesting day today, I'll come to that later. Right, September's been a very busy month with many local people needing assistance during these troubled times. Amongst the many actions I've taken in response to residents' issues, I wrote to the Director of Public Health for Hampshire on the subject of COVID-19 testing to try and get clarification for the local situation, as many residents have complained about the distancing they've travelled to get a test. His response was, we had to keep looking at the internet to find availability. Clearly, he knew no more than we do, as the tests are organised by the Government Department for Health and Social Care. So we know where to blame them. I attended the Hampshire County Council September strategic planning meeting to speak against the request for plan. Whilst I could not get it defeated, the committee deferred the decision until appropriate measures were put in place to record the noise levels affecting local people. So action can be taken if they go over their allowed noise level. Once again, I asked the local residents near the quarry, please email me, please email me any complaints and I will take them up with Hampshire County Council, New Forest District Council Environmental Health and the quarry operators if appropriate. I had a meeting with Emma Norris of the Library Service to discuss how we can help keep the library open with volunteers and I've asked the Parish Council to help in finding them so they can work the Library Service to keep it open on a Friday afternoon. Today I attended a virtual Hampshire County Council meeting and after a number of complaints from local parents about water lane and the lack of social distancing, I seconded a motion for a school street which is a concept where outside the school drop-off and pick-up time, where inside the school drop-off and pick-up time, sorry, a temporary traffic restriction on motorised traffic at school drop-off and pick-up time is applied to school traffic and food traffic. The result is a safer, healthier and pleasant environment. The school street schemes offer a proactive solution for school communities to tackle air pollution, poor health and road danger reduction. A school street scheme will encourage a healthier lifestyle and active travel to school for families and lead to a better environment for everyone, in addition to allowing social distancing during the time of pandemic by removing the car element and thus making more space for safer distance walking. The motion was supported by the whole council, some of them reluctantly, but it was a good motion, so they had to, and we'll go forward to see how it can be implemented in next year's budget. On a broader front, children's services, I'm due to attend the Children and Young People Select Committee next Monday, more of which I'll report back at a later date. Thank you very much. I would now like to go to, to district councillors, and uh, the first uh, square that I'm going to on my screen is Councillor Dowd, if you'd like to, to, to address the council. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the 2nd of September, at the, I, I asked for, full, for um, reassurance about the District Council's strategy for flood defence at the full council meeting. The answer we got really didn't address the problem. On the 11th of September, I attended the briefing on changes to the electoral canvas. Positive changes are to do with simplification. Issues with cold telephone calls and emails with embedded links, especially when general advice to the vulnerable residents um, is not to respond to them, still need to be resolved. Um, I attended a tour um, of the Jones Lane cottages. They were impressive and sympathetic updating of the um, council owned properties. And, but I used the occasion to press for action on the old police station site, ideal for affordable and social housing. Casework is including more issues to do with depression and anxiety related to COVID-19 issues. Thank you, Chairman. Now, thank you for that report. Now, before I go to Councillor Clark, who's next, something I forgot to mention earlier, members, we have two charity meetings immediately after the council meeting, so nobody log off when the meeting's over. You cannot go away quickly, okay? But they won't take long, so don't panic. Right, Councillor Mark Clark, please. Um, just to two issues, I, I'm, I apologise to, uh, to Claire for not giving you a, a short report, but there isn't much to it. Uh, simply to say that I asked a full 
full a question at the full council at the new forest district council to ask um when the various brexit lorry parks uh, were going to be built um given that the government uh, enacted legislation to itself to build these parks whether uh, given that hampshire county council and southampton city council were mentioned as two council authorities uh, that would be asked to provide parks whether uh, in fact within the new forest district area uh, and my thoughts turn to dibden bay area whether anything would be there but uh, we were gave, given a categoric reassurance by the council leader that those areas weren't marked out so um, uh, fortunately for Hythe unfortunately for other areas um, secondly we are, I remain seriously disappointed that the leisure centre um, privatisation continues the task and finish which I sit on um, this brings into um, view the idea of, of a managed partnership that the district council would prefer it worded as um, but uh, they seem to want to proceed on on that path uh, despite various warnings of us about the fact of in this covid uh, time it, uh, there's nothing going to be particularly real about balance sheets for any uh, potential bidder uh, but we'll continue to fight that battle mr chairman thank you thank you about councillor clark thank you uh, councillor osborne You're muted. Yeah, sorry, I, I forgot. I didn't mute myself. Someone muted me. <laughs> um, we, uh, Melody Roberts, Councillor Melody Roberts, and I attended um, a well, a virtual in the end because of COVID. They cancelled the um, the visit um, of the um, Marchwood Port development, and I think Councillor Roberts wants to speak on that uh, in a minute. Um, I can give more details uh, uh, if you want me to. Um, and we've um, we've attended the environmental overview and scrutiny committee, which deals with all the uh, you know refuse collection and uh, environmental issues. Um, that's about all I've got to say on the uh, district um, meetings, really. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rebecca Clark. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I haven't really anything further than isn't already touched on by other district councillors this month. Okay, but thank, thank you. you. Councillor Alex Wade. Can I ask, because mine's slightly longer, that you go to Councillor Delamere because uh, first, please. Can you ask what? Sorry. Go, go to Sandra first, please. Okay, Councillor Sandra Delamere. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just two things, really. Um, and Councillor Dowd uh, mentioned the first one. Attended a site visit at Jones Lane. The refurbished cottages and we were very impressed by um, the work that had been done. Hopefully it'll soon be um, open for the residents. Um, and the other thing is this morning I attended the um, uh, corporate overview and scrutiny panel and we had some updates on um, the um, grants to, to local businesses and so on for, for over COVID and also um the um council tax schemes for for um reduced council tax for people on low incomes and so on but there wasn't anything else to report thank you thank you councillor de councillor alex wade now the floor is yours my apologies it's i'll try and, it's slightly longer um so i do apologize and i'll try and edit it as best i can chairman um we had full council on Monday, the 7th of September, where um, a motion from the Environment Overview and Scrutiny Panel was supported by the full council, uh, which was supporting a feasibility study into the rail link along the waterside, which is another positive step in support from the wider New Forest towards the waterside railway. The council also voted on proposals from Hive and Dibden council members uh, on three wards of two councillors to put forward towards the Boundary Commission. Um, these were creating new Hive Central, Hive South and Dibden and Dibden Purley wards. Uh, the ward maps and numbers were worked on by officers and councillors Dowd and councillor Malcolm Wade. Uh, incredible bit of work there. Uh, and we do feel that the new wards are a very cohesive split of communities with some clear boundaries and especially pleased to see the numbers broadly the same in all three. Elsewhere, there was confirmation from the council that we will have additional grant funding of a thousand 
seven pounds in the next calendar year per councillor towards local uh, clubs and associations and charities uh, and there was 15k of grant funding to go to support the high ferry after some great campaigning from councillor malcolm wade um, oh elsewhere slightly more negative news from medium-term financial plan update which was presented with the main issue being the 1.3 million expenditure change and a further two and a half million income losses expected several post projects are being pushed back such as the improvements of public conveniences but work on the new depot and hardly still remains which is five and a half million over two years budgeted there was a proposal to green principal to use reserves to support any future requirements however this was voted down by the majority administration all portfolio holders are currently undertaking a review of revenue opportunities costs and more worryingly efficiencies long-term funding from central government remains unclear and COVID pandemic means planning for the future is a challenge for all authorities there is a full audit of costs including staffing at our leisure centres being undertaken while a full review of fees and charges will be actions with maximizing revenue where possible becomes the core policy i also attended the community overview and leisure scrutiny panel on tuesday the 15th of september there was a really informative update from officers uh, about the issues arising in our communities um, due to the impact of the pandemic an assessment on how local clubs and associations have been impacted by lockdown and the issues around cash flow and revenue lack of volunteers and the worry for members who are wary about attending or even contributing to these groups that were so vital to them prior to the pandemic there was a discussion about how digital connectivity uh, can support the engagement while evidence was presented that there is a genuine concern over young people's mental health during lockdown and the anxiety uh, by all residents are on returning to venues for local clubs overall memberships are down for local sports clubs and there is concern from local associations about lack of support network cost of ppe and even when the junior leagues will return our council community safety officers are doing an incredible job working with all these organizations and trying to bring them together maybe for some collaborative funding uh, and they're having regular zoom meetings with all these associations to try and offer any guidance and support I've already mentioned, obviously, of the grant funding. Um, Dibton Golf Centre was also mentioned, where the portfolio holder gave us an update on the golf club. There are concerns from members over aspects of how the club is run, including the central point of communication for members on site, especially during uh, the pandemic. The officers and cabinet members are working with my time, and I highlighted some examples given uh, which uh, the portfolio holder will respond to me on. Overall, the course is seeing more year-on-year -year rounds of golf. However, Despite being fully operational with social distancing, it's not being reflected in the revenue with the traditional main source, catering, weddings and so forth, meaning it's down 50% uh, at this stage year on year. Councillor Mark Clark has commented on leisure centres, which we were updated on the, the timescale of the current process. I would like to credit Councillor Mark Clark for his work on the task of Finnish Troop and holding the process uh, to account. Again, I share his con concerns. And lastly, we were advised that from a community safety update, there are to be 90 new police officers joining the Hampshire Force starting training around now. However, there was no confirmation about how many are leaving for a true reflection of net gain of officers. And there has also been a grant from the, Hampshire, the Police Crime Commissioner on supporting issues around domestic abuse. However, again, we were awaiting confirmation on how much, if any of that, will go towards uh, issues within the News Forest District. Um, the cabinet member confirmed that Apple Tree Care Line and CCTV costs at this time will not be raised. However, 21 and 22 fees are structures to be reviewed. Uh, and lastly, Safe in New Forest have been engaging with residents on how they feel uh, safe in our district over the past few months. With plenty of observers, with uh, antisocial behaviour being a main concern, understandably but obviously COVID for this council to collaborate with the team on that in particular uh, moving forward. Sorry um, for the 11th report. Thank you for that very detailed report. Really, going about going last when you guys have done all that, there's very little for me to say. But I will briefly mention a couple of points. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think it's already been mentioned about the fact we were successful with the boundary uh, uh, meeting review on the boundary meeting about changing that um, I, I asked a question of the housing portfolio holder in the last council meeting about neighbor disputes of NFDC tenants and the satisfaction levels 
uh, of the solutions. I did this because of two issues in Hive where local people have not had their problems resolved by the New Forest <laughs> District Council intervention. I'm pleased to say that this has had the impact I'd hoped and the FDC have upped their game and are working to resolve both issues to the residents' satisfaction. Um, I'm also very pleased to say that uh, my efforts to support High Ferry has come with NFDC command committing 15k along with 15k from Hampshire County Council and Southampton City Council uh, which will help that ferry through the winter time. I attended a planning committee but there's no lo local applications. Uh, we had a range of items uh, and a pre-planning application review to the Milford Seawall. And finally, I attended the waste strategy update uh, with, uh, with Philip, and that's moving ever near to completion as it is driven by government, central government requirements. Uh, and the last thing, members, uh, is which two of you have all, or some of you have already alluded to, is, is the leisure, the leisure centres. But we really, really need to keep those uh, in this current time in the public domain. Uh, and I think we all of us should work hard to protect public services. Yeah. Okay. That's that. And now go to reports from members serving on outside bodies. Do we have any? I, 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 RTS from Mark Clark. I'm so sorry, Mr. Chairman. I did, did forget to add one thing to my report. Just uh, additionally, uh, there is an ongoing concern of oversight regarding the Forest Lodge uh, farm development uh, of Forley Road and enabling the NFDC in its current uh, pressured circumstances, I recognise that, but from maintaining an oversight whilst the remedial work is done on that site in order to get the site open and people living in those properties, but there is some significant concerns from the next door neighbour and we continue to work on that. That's all Mr Chairman, I'm sorry I forgot to mention it. No, it's all right. I, I am uh, on the case and I'm continually writing to, to the District Council Planning mm -hmm. Department to get a response on that. Okay, uh, are there any reports from members and outside bodies? Councillor Roberts? floor is yours. Thank you. Councillor Osborne and myself went to visit the, uh, well, virtually, the Solent Gateway Limited presentation on their new combined port with the MOD and container ports. Um, we both said that we bombarded him with questions as he's the um, port director and asked him most residents and businesses are concerned about the roads and what he intends to do about them. He said they're going to keep an eye on it. And then uh, Councillor Osborne asked him about uh, cycle paths. And he said he's going to look at that as well. So um, as the consultation won't be finished until spring 2021, um, there's hope yet. We also, I also asked him about security, which is a major issue of mine, as you know. And um, he stipulated that MOD standards would be applied uh, strictly at their side and at the port and their own security would be at the road side of the port. Um, so they're employing nine, 85 new people, stevedores and security. The transient container ships ha are having more cranes and equipment and there's nine acres to fill aggregate uh, transferred by barge and sea to the uh, addition of the port from Foley and back, which lost me because that's too tech. But um, so it was quite interesting. And he said that if he wanted to visit, he'd show us round. We might take him up on that. It's quite interesting. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, modern ports are quite interesting. And, and yeah. if you get the opportunity to go, I, I would encourage all <laughs> members of the council to do that and indeed get the Solent Gateway to give a presentation to this council, because I think you'll find that their business plan will be have a significant impact. They were very happy to come and do that, Good. by invitation. Uh, Councillor Osborne? Yes, I, I was just going to add that, that actually they did want to do us a presentation if we'd like one, March with Parish Council having one on the 12th of October and uh, you know we could have it at our next meeting if they wanted and they've got a contact with um, Sean Spencer that um, they just, if we say we'd like it on the next agenda as a council tonight, that they, he'll get in touch with them and arrange it. Um, they did say about there will be signage to stop the heavy traffic going through the actual village or near the school and it will just say um, no traffic for the port to come or go through the village. Um, and they said the impact on the A326 would be minimal. 
uh, but there needs to be a consultation with HCC and um, just basically saying that they want to promote themselves as a port fit a port footprint setup. Um, I asked a question, you know, how how many container units will be processed in a week, and that information wasn't at hand. And also, of course, because of COVID, they didn't do the um, the road survey because there just there wasn't the traffic on it to make it a true record. Um, they said that currently, you know, that they are working 24 hours a day and they have got cranes and any um, changes will only be minimal. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I will look forward to what a minimal change actually means, because uh, if they've invested 35 million, they must be expecting a considerable uh, minimal improvement to make not only recruit investment to, to make a working profit. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Okay, now we move to item number eight, which is the public forum. And members of the public are invited to make representations to Hybrid and Parish Council on any matters relating to the work of the council, public bodies, the mission to meet, etc. Act 1960. Well, we have one question, uh, and the member of the public uh, who is happy for me to read it out uh, on his behalf, and it's from a Mr. David Rogers. My question to Paris Council is, could the hedge running parallel to the railings on Prospect Place be cut back 400 millimetres to 15 inches to restore the footpath to its original width? Evidence of an original width, width sorry, its original width can be seen by tracing the path's paviors, which are somewhat disappeared under the hedge. A wider footpath will be most useful, especially at the time of social distancing. Agreed. The answer to that, which has been provided by our, our, our maintenance supervisor uh, Marcus Kendall. He said, I was at Prospect Place first thing this morning. That was, where, that was the date of uh, the Monday the 21st, uh, as we were planning to reinstall the bench under the trees and carrot repairs uh, to the bin that was damaged at the weekend. The hedge in question belongs to Hampshire County Council. However, we always, we being the parish council, always cut this hedge as there's a, co a covenant on Prospect Place regarding not blocking the view from the houses. As they're now in the hedge cutting season, I will arrange for the hedge to be cut harder rather than just trimmed to give the extra room on the sections of the footpath where it has encroached. Well, uh, thank you to Marcus. We will be addressing that to the local resident satisfaction. Uh, we now go to item nine, which is questions to take questions from councillors to councillors. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members, of the uh, I've got uh, RTF and math. Floor's yours. Please go to Alex first, just because there's some slight noise interference in my house. Okay. Actually, I'm just keeping it. Alex, then you go to you next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my question is to you, the County Councillor. Um, with regards to the school street scheme, which it seems like a very, very positive scheme, particularly around um, school times, what clarification, will it just be the main road? So in the case of um, our infant, junior and senior school uh, on the edge of my ward, would it just be the one road is in Water Lane or would it be any feeder roads off it? And what sort of timescales are going to be considered? Bear in mind that there are staggered arrivals currently due to uh, social distancing from the pandemic. Uh, is the plan to have this in place after those timescales are reviewed? So it's a fixed period. Uh, when there, there are no cars uh, going to be proposed on the road? Right. Um, I used uh, Water Lane as an example. Water Lane is a, a single carriageway, really rural lane, with a hedge on one side and a pavement and a bit of verge on the other, 629 metres long, with a secondary school, a junior school, an infant school on. It's one of the closest... Uh, groupings of schools probably in the county so it's a good example where the street scene uh, a school street school street concept would work the idea is it's only that lane uh, and a traffic regulation is put in place prior to that we have con consultation with the school the parents and local residents to ensure uh, that everybody is happy with it and blue badge holders local residents uh, and a, ver a range of people will be still be allowed to go down there. The idea is that, that we, the parents can drop their children off uh, and they can have safe passageway down uh, uh, Water Lane to the various schools. 
Um, government has given quarter of a million pounds funding, uh, that it, it, uh, which is not a lot really, for various councils to do this. So the, the county council is going to look at this, not just for, wa for Water Lane, Nodeswood, Orchard, Junior and Infant School, for the entire county. It's gone to one of their committees. and um, It's unlikely anything will be done before uh, the next financial year. It won't be done before the next financial year. And they'll be looking to see if they've got the money in the budget to do it next year. You, an interesting fact you may or may not know that um, the majority of accidents to school children knocked down take place in the drop-off and pick-up times from school. So there's, a, there's a, an issue even before COVID that why this is a good thing to do uh, and that well the, the, the county county is looking at it. I can't give you any more detail on that because it's got to go to a committee and it goes through the council process. But I will be reporting back on it when I have some more information. But it does not affect any other streets. Wherever it goes, or wherever we went in other parts of, of, of Hive as well, it only affects the street outside the school. Okay? Right, Thank I'll you. go back to, to Matt now. You're next, and then Alan, Alan and Sandra. And Thanks, Philip. Malcolm. Um, so as you are aware, this council paid um, for a year's supply of Wi-Fi to the Handy Trust building, um, to the youth club. Um, I would like to ask if this council can look at doing that again. I've spoken to uh, Candy Huxham, who still runs the youth club, although she's not the manager of the Handy Trust anymore. She does still run the youth club. And that I know if we could do this, it would help them um, under COVID rules. Um, as I know, it's I know it's quite a lot of money to pay for, and I know uh, you know us subsidising it for another year would help them considerably. Okay, uh, Tracy, does this not need this? This not need. Pardon my expression. Double negative. Doesn't this need to go to a a a, a council meeting? Yes, it will, because it's not an agenda item to fund it. So we can raise it as an agenda item. Oh, should it be part of the budget discussion for next year? Yes. Are you happy with that? We'll put it in the budget discussion for next year, Matt. Yes. Can we just um, send? Uh, I, I don't know if there's where. I don't, I, uh, Alex has asked how much it, it cost. Um, so, is there a way we can send members a, a price first, just so they get a feel how much it is? Is that okay, Chairman? Yeah, we can do that, can't we, Tracy? Yeah. Okay, no, so no, send everyone a note around after this, what's it cost, and then we can feed it into the budget process. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alan? Chairman. Got, sorry, I've Alan, got Alan next, uh, Alex. Sorry, Chairman, on that point, can I quickly put, pipe in? Okay, go on. Um, to, if we can get a quote, then there could be consideration given to District Council's grant funding. Uh, okay, yeah, that's a possibility, yeah. As an op okay. option. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I've got three RTSs from Alan, so all over to you. Sorry, Chair, I didn't see it come up. Uh, yeah, two items. We just discussed about footpath down at Prospect Place. Uh, I've been in touch with Hampshire County Council, as you asked me, uh, about footpaths, grass, uh, running from over onto the footpaths, making them too narrow. Hampshire County Council say it's a parish problem, not their problem. So I've been in touch with Marcus and he's asked if we can have a meeting out on site so I can show him where some of the problems are so that he can then see about whether his team do it or whether he can push it back to Hampshire County Council. So I've yet to reply to him on that, which I should do tomorrow, uh, so that we can then have a meeting on site so I can show him what the problems the are. The question is, are you aware, Chairman? Are you aware, That's Chairman? It. I've done what you told me. Yeah, good. Uh, and are you aware, Chairman, that uh, road signs um, from the list that we gave to Helen to deal with, she's been in touch with, um, I suppose it's highways, and they're very negative about the road signs. Um, but he, she even agrees that the signs on Southampton Road, top of Jones Lane, are wrong and should be dealt with and so she's chasing that up to the extent that the 30 mile an hour sign is totally obliterated by a tree. The other two signs it really that I've got in question are that it still shows that the arrows are pointing into the police station down Jones Lane and if they don't do anything about it I'll go down and cover them up. Okay um, well 
if Helen has any further problems with the, the county council, she should let, let give me the nod and I'll get on to them. Well, I think she's just getting back to them to start with, to okay. just point out that, that although they've said sort of negative about everything, uh, that needs to be dealt with. But um, yeah, I'll see how it goes. I'll say, but if, if they still say no, then the two police station signs particularly, which a resident near me has complained about, uh, I'll go down and get some tape over them so that it obliterates them. Thank you. In response to your point about the, the, the um, graph verges and hedges, and I say this to all members, uh, that uh, whilst Hampshire County Council is responsible for a fair nut, anything that borders on the highway, unless it's private land, now, but they are responsible for keeping the pavements open. If uh, uh, the pavements are uh, invaded by bushes and vegetation and it's on parish land, we will cut it back. If it's on district council land, we have to get in touch with the district. It's on county land, goes on the website and they have to cut it back. Um, it's important, incumbent on all of you, because there are past issues all over. If you see any in your ward, if, it, if, it's, if it's on a pavement, report it to the county. If it's on uh, leisure, um, what we call leisure land, you know, woodland and so forth, check with at the parish council because it might be ours or it might be district so to work on it. But um, it, we do want to keep our, our pavements even more so with social distancing as clear as possible. So anything like that. And if it's any county and you have a problem, come to me with that. Okay. Well, I, Chairman, if I could just continue, my concern with that is particularly with social distancing now, some of the grass is so, so overgrown on pavements that you can't walk two abreast, never mind social distance. Uh, at the moment, apart from today's rain, everything's dry. But come the winter, it means somebody has got to be walking in wet grass and mud to get past someone. So I will arrange with Marcus that we have a meet on site. I'll point him out what the problems are. Um, I'll, I'll uh, include you in on it and uh, Alex, I know he's concerned and so is Steph, but particularly, I know everyone is, but they have particularly mentioned about it. So I'll keep him in the loop and then uh, we'll see where we go to have a meeting on site. Well, I think it's, it's, it's very, you're doing the right thing in bringing this to attention. It's a good thing we need to fix, uh, go along with that. So let's see what we can do. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Sandra, Councillor Delamere, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just for clarification, you mentioned about the um, grant to the ferry. Yeah. And you said that district council of 15,000 and the county are giving 15,000. And Southampton City, did I hear right that they have uh, said they will give 15,000? Because last I'd heard, they, they were the last to agree. Uh, you are correct in the fact they were the last to agree, uh, but um, they, they are giving 15,000. Um, they had some caveats that the county wanted to understand what they were uh, before they came up and said yes, but it's, it's now in, 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 in the public domain that they're obviously all happy with it. So, yeah, and that 45k will be a big help to boost from to keeping the family right. going in the winter. Oh, good. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, now it's Councillor Philip Dowd. Uh, I just wanted to come back on the um, comment about the um, I I in your um, report about the um, school road with, yeah. with, with the orchard schools and Nodeswood. Um, I'm, I'm just curious because obviously you know what will happen is that um, there will be people parking in other roads if they can't park in Water Lane. So what is what is going to be done to ensure that North Road okay. and Nash Road are not then overburdened with um, parked cars? Uh, well, I, I can, well, first of all, they park there at the moment anyway. The, the, well, yes, the, but it's the, going to be worse. The, isn't the, it? the, the idea behind this is that in the morning they can drop the, 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 the children off at the entrance to Water Lane and they can walk to school or they can walk to school. One of the problems that, uh, um, that is behind this is that parents find the roads dangerous, understandably so, to school, so they drive their children to school. So it's a self-generating problem. If we produce a safe environment in, outside the school, then they can walk their children to school or they can drop off at the end 
and they can walk uh, in groups. There are, it's, it's, it's a bit of a step change and it needs everybody to work together. You're absolutely right to, to highlight that point. But the idea of the motion was not just for Water Lane. It's for all schools in Hampshire that have a problem like that. It was raised to me by re uh, local resident parents that they really worried about social distancing because you can't. With, with the cars down one side of Water Lane, the buses and other vehicles coming that are parked, coming up, up, up the other, up from the other direction, you know, everyone squeezed onto the pavement and the grass. So you know, so the social bubble is no longer there. It's like a human wave. So we need to do something to try and, particularly at the moment, to try and split, split them up. And there are a lot of environmental and, as I said, road safety issues as well. So. Um, it's a very complex, uh, it's, not, it's not complex, it's quite straightforward. It's a traffic order. How you met police it is more challenging, but there will have to be well thought out scheme. So you're right, it's not just a, a let's bung in a traffic order and off we go. Does that answer that to the point? Um, I, I think it's one of those things where we're going to have to see see how it runs. Yeah. But it, it will need policing. That's That's really the point I'm making. Well, the good news is we'll have our ACO, ACSOs by... Well in place <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought you might say that. <laughs> yeah, and they can help. Okay, uh, Alex, did you want to say anything else or was that answering the question that we did earlier? It was on the same issue. It's that I think Councillor Dowd has raised a very important issue. Now, he didn't mention the road of main concern for me, which would be Upper Mullins Lane. Uh, and obviously there's also Heatherstone Avenue for wild ground. Now... This in concept is a very important issue and, and the concept is one that we should all support. However, there are lots of logistics uh, around this and my concern would be uh, the safety of people parking, walking uh, and pedestri pedestrians crossing uh, Upper Mullins Lane, which can be a road that people already drive far too fast down, irrelevant at the time of day, let alone uh, when there are, because there, are, there are cars parked on the side of that road all, all of the day, let alone during uh, the school period where it's pretty hectic so it, I, I don't want to move the issue along a road and this has to be a benefit and we need to look at how we can help police it uh, and support it and create it so the issue isn't moved a couple of roads along and also to roads like Pear Tree Road and, um, and Orchard Way and so forth so um, I, I take on uh, Councillor Dowd's point absolutely but for me up at Mullins Lane is one of the main issues and uh, obviously uh, near your ward uh, have seen Avenue as well Malcolm. Yeah but we're not necessarily uh, th this is the only example I use where this would be real benefit to us would be in Water Lane because mm. of the, the three schools together. Uh, it, it will be very difficult to do in um, for wild ground because there is nowhere else for them to go because right. it's in the middle of an urban area but anyway you, but you, you've made some very valid points um, and i'm not saying that this is going to go in next next may or june it's got to go through a, a quite complex process in the county council because you looked at and investigated the concept of the idea is good it protects children it's on many levels but there's a lot of work to be done before it can be put in and it has to be the right schemes because we don't want to Save one problem and generate another. Yeah, yeah. Not absolutely. Well said, okay. Michael. Right. Uh, well, any more questions? No. Right. Oh no. Hang on. My apologies. I'm going down the list. Um, Councillor Mark Clark. Just a question to you, as chairman of the council, uh, more than county councillor, Mr. Chairman. It's just how our staff are doing with regarding to policing on the play parks. Given we had quite a lot of, uh, uh, we had a member of the public listening to that debate, making sure that we had a, a set uh, routine for uh, both opening and closing of the certain play parks. I just wonder how that had been in operation and whether our staff are remaining safe. Uh, well. Um I will revert to the to, to the to the to, to Tracy in a minute, but first, I would say I think the, the overwhelming majority of the people of Hive and Dibden have been very responsible in, in the way that they have conducted themselves and their children in the play parks, uh, and I have not been told of any issue where our staff uh, 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 have felt threatened, unsafe, or otherwise. They continue to do a sterling job on our behalf and on behalf of the people of Hive and Dibden. Tracy, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I haven't heard of any further discontent around the play areas. I think it's been fine so far and, and um, our sort of um, maintenance team have been going out and doing their cleaning and checking on it regularly. So. Yeah, yeah uh, no news is good news, I suppose, in that, that respect. Um, right, Councillor Stephanie Osborne, then Alex Wade. 
Okay, um, this, on Monday, I was very interested to see how many uh, children or students at Nosewood School and up uh, Water Lane area were walking and cycling. It was a little bit like Amsterdam. So when you tried to cross the road, it wasn't actually cars. It was cycles and large groups of people, which was really refreshing to see on a nice Monday morning. Um, I think it's an excellent uh, scheme, this school street, street scheme. And um, I know people are still complaining about the parents hanging around very much longer after than they've, when they've dropped them off, which does cause quite a lot of um, concern to people trying to come out of their gateways. Um, the other interesting thing is that um, the senior countryside access ranger, Helen Barber, has said that she has um, started work on the uh, path up at Netley View and that they are going to be uh, cutting back the vegetation and um, removing the fly tipping. And she's looking forward to having um, some groups. I don't know if people watching our, our um, session tonight, if anyone's interested, there will be volunteer groups to make that into a really nice walk. Uh, the other um, area of volunteers was um, Matt Kitcher's um, wonderful scheme to get a skate park. We need um, people for the committee and we need people to help raise funds and just generally show that they're interested in uh, getting a skate park for our youth and teenagers. Thank you. Perhaps, perhaps we can put both those things on the website, Tracy, and get Helen to, to publicise them, could we? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, Alex? Uh, yes, is the chairman aware that obviously there have been local residents just round uh, what would be round the corner from us normally in South Street having concerns with regards to the Churchill development uh, and some very anti-social parking, to put it politely, um, from the builders and developers causing regular frustration to the neighbours um, both next door and directly across. Um, I And I believe yourself have written to the head of planning to see what can be done uh, and development control to discuss this further with the developers. Uh, it's not the first time this issue has been raised and not the first issue raised about this development. Uh, it is an ongoing issue and uh, part of obviously the long term issues regarding parking here. But um, And just very quickly on uh, Councillor Clark's point, um, as someone who's been to the park, couple of our parks every weekend since we opened pretty much I can say that residents and even the children have been really good with social distancing queuing up uh, even when it's busy uh, it's great to see them busy but everyone um, and also allowing people to go on the swing take two three minutes and I think everyone I've seen has been really understanding of the uh, the rules and regulations as best as they can and uh, it's been good to see people in the parks. Good, thank you for that. And uh, yes, yes, we are awaiting uh, the New Forest District Council to come back with a coherent response to that issue in South Street. We may need to chase them up again, Alex. <laughs> okay, uh, now the next item is the Planning Committee to receive the delegated issues of the Planning Committee. Over to you, Councillor Alex Wade. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I do apologise for all the talking I've been doing today. Um, so. Let, once again, the fabulous planning committee provided me with all their comments uh, virtually and the final and taking all their comments, the final uh, part and the final decision uh, was sent to our officers to represent the Highland Diven Parish Council decision uh, to the planning uh, applications over the last 30 days within our community. Um, once again, thank you ever so much for all the for all my councillors on the committee for getting back to me uh, uh, within the deadline and for the officers support again getting the information to district council officers. Um, as we've already mentioned, obviously Councillor Colin did declare uh, an interest in the application 20-10757 and there were no comments from Councillor Malcolm Wade as he is on the full district council planning committee. So moving from page 15 onwards. If you have any comments, please let me know. Uh, we'll go page by page. Page 15. Page 16. Page 17. And page 18. Do we all agree that there are a fair reflection um, of the planning comments and the planning minutes that we all agreed? Do I, are, are they happy to be uh, accepted colleagues? Yep. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mem. Thank you, Ch thank you, Alex, and thank okay, you, members. Okay. So before I um, 
before I close, um, I would just like to say that um, the two extras that we mentioned, one was in the site of Mountfield um, due to the development that's about to be going on there. We are entitled to a small contribution, uh, a development money towards a, a, an area that benefits the community. Um, I, I agreed that actually it would be better for this money to go into our pot for a more suited area in our community and not based in Mountfield because it's not the most accessible or central part of the community. And lastly, I maintain this council's objection to the application on the land of St. St. Jude, which was also supported by my colleagues. So we maintain our consistent decision that we object in full to any to the development proposed on the on the land of St. Jude in Didden Purley. So I propose these minutes and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, right now I go to item 11, which is the personnel subcommittee to receive, to receive and approve the minutes of the personnel subcommittee held on the 27th of August. Councillor Dow, would you like to present the minutes, please? Thank you very much, Chairman. Right, so we're looking at um, page 19 in the, in the pack, and I'll, I'll go through page by page, and if anyone would like to um, indicate if they're not happy with anything there. So that's page 19 and page 20. All good. Can you all indicate that you're happy with that? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Now, uh, members, we go to item 12, wild flowers, to discuss the possibility of planting wild flowers. Now, uh, uh, Marcus has sent uh, some notes, considerable lot of notes out about this. So, uh, floor's yours. Who wants to lead on this then? It's not a tumbleweed moment, by the way. I mean, if Rebecca wants to, I would quite happily propose Rebecca to lead because I know she um, spoke quite heavily on this subject. Rebecca, so, you've I mean, got an Rebecca, RTS. It's up to you, but I would, I would, I would propose you. Rebecca's yeah, got an um, RTS. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, you? I'm happy to to speak about this. Um, firstly, to say thank you very much to Marcus because I know that he's done an awful lot of work on this. Um, it's something that we've been discussing for some time and I know that Hampshire County Council as well has it on their radar and indeed I think before Covid um, it was one of the most frequently emailed questions um, so it is something that, that they would like to um, work on also. Um, the, the reason I particularly wanted to, to raise it this evening was because I was looking at an example of something that had been done in Devon with the Tarka Community Trust um, it's a, a, a project called um, Life on the Verge and they've actually set up a whole pack um, for residents as well um, where they could, they've got an e-learning package um, where you know group community groups and residents if they see um, a piece of land or a verge somewhere in their community um, it, it goes through all the do's and don'ts and it equips them to safely manage this they've done this with the idea that obviously it has great benefits to the environment but also if it's managed well and it can actually save money for the councils as well because they're not cutting to the same extent now Marcus has done an awful lot of work on this and yes in order to get those savings it's important that it is managed um, there's a timetable of cutting and that it's managed and everything but I think there's a lot out there which hopefully Hampshire are also looking at as well um, where this has been successfully done elsewhere so it's not even as though we have to do you know we don't have to reinvent the wheel there's a lot of really good and long established um, schemes that have been going on for some years already um, so I wanted obviously to highlight that um, to, to add in to the research that's been done already but it actually occurred to me this evening listening to um, the discussion about the pathways which obviously sometimes you know adjoin verges um, there could be a way that we could combine this um, because as part of a, I mean, basically you'll see in this toolkit, um, it tells you what to do and when, and um, you know, it, it could incorporate some management of, of 
of these bits that maybe are not getting the, the treatment that um, makes them entirely safe and makes them entirely neat. So maybe we could, we could actually join those two together, you know, the um, getting some of these sort of warm paths tidied at the same time as, as the verges. So um, yeah, sorry, that, that's rather a long <laughs> and detailed um, explanation, but that's sort of what prompted um, me to ask if we could put this on the agenda this evening. Thank you. Okay, anyone else want to talk on this? Yes, that's okay. Sure. The, the, uh, Rebecca, I don't think I can add any more really to what you've said. I think that was a, quite a good explanation of, of why this is a good idea <coughs> and, and of the local projects and schemes that are applicable. I think for myself, it was, it's, it's, you know, we wanted to try and be a greener and fairer council. And I just thought this was one way, and I, I, have, I have had uh, personal messages from residents asking if this council can do it. Um, and not only that, it just sees that local bee stocks um, have a supply of food and are able to access food more easily. I know a lot of farmers and things will use pesticides where there is, you know, and if we implement this and it works, you know, it helps uh, local bees that are, you know, struggling um, in the area, I think. So, yeah, I just think it's a really good idea. And if we can follow it through, why not? Okay. Well, um, you, you, one, one point that Marcus made to me, and I think we ought to be cognizant of that, um, let, letting wildflowers isn't about putting a load of seeds on the ground and walking away. Even uh, uh, wildflower areas need a level of natural management. But I, I, along with Rebecca, think it's a good idea, and all, mo, you, I'm sure, it's a good idea to, to look at this. Um, we have a, a, an open spaces committee, don't we, Tracy, that um, could actually take this as an agenda item to look at the work rather than, than the council? Yeah, I believe it's a working group, not committee. Yeah, sorry, it is a working group, my apologies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the, the vehicle with which to, 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 to deal with the detail in this, shall I say, probably is that 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 working group if they if 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 it is um your wish as a council uh, uh, that we, we take this to the working group to formulate a plan to uh, to to actually make to look at areas where we can do this and what is required does that sort of tick the box do you're looking for rebecca um, yes, I mean, could, could you clarify how this sort of knits with, with Hampshire as the lead? Because from what I understand, um, I mean, it's quite complicated, isn't it? The fact that all these verges are owned by different levels of council. Yeah. I mean, that's the first bit of, you know, you, you see a patch of ground. First of all, you've got to find out who owns it. So I think what, what Marcus was saying was, um, you know, um, part of the issue is, is, is almost doing an audit of, of potential sites, which maybe residents could help with as well. I'm just sort of trying to understand how we, how we tap right the way through to, to Hampshire's assistance, because presumably if they're managing it from the top, okay. what would you think is the best way to, because we don't want to duplicate effort if they have already got this on their, on their uh, agenda. <clears throat> Well, uh, it may be on their agenda, but looking mm, at the, the, not the fact on they're boarded on a hundred million pound deficit, it's not going to be high on their agenda. No, fair uh, enough, fair enough. Right, I think the way forward, if it goes to that sub, that 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 working group, I keep saying subcommittee, so working group, uh, yeah. then we can work with that organisation, that group to to identify a survey or some methodology for identifying specific areas then find out who they belong to and work with those councils to, to put mm -hmm. something in place. I'm just trying to look at a practical route to yeah, turn in this yeah. very good idea into uh, uh, something that, that can be done. Does that sound yeah, right to you, Tracy, good. as well? You are right, Rebecca? Matt, yeah. uh, is everybody happy with yeah, that? Yeah, Malcolm, just quickly, um, can we see if the Hyde and Dibden Woodland Group would be willing to work with well, us that, on that, that's that will be part of this process because it, it we want to work with other agencies of course and, we do and, and it was just it public. was just a, a thing that come to my mind that was yeah. by rts that i just think there would be a good um, partnership to have on this on this project yeah but what we the, the way to, to handle this is, is to is to uh, put it to that working group as an item and then discuss it things like that in that uh, environment and come up with a plan a plan of action and then take it forward philip i think you're next 
Yes, I would certainly like to support that as an action plan, um, working with, with partner groups, volunteer groups and whatever um, to, to get a, a managed solution there. But as has already been said, it needs a, a quite a lot of thought um, to make sure that we do the right thing and something that is going to be sustainable. Thank you. Okay, so members, are you all happy that we put that to the working group to, to take on uh, uh, and formulate a, a, an action plan? Thumbs up, everybody. Right, okay, I think that's pretty unanimous there. Good. I, I'm sure Matt agrees that he's disappeared. But, right, okay. Right, now we now move to uh, item uh, to what, 30 outside bodies to appoint a representative to serve on the Hive and Dibden Woodland and Waterside group. Okay, members, this is the this is the, this is the biggie. Who wants to serve on this group? Please, a volunteer. Mr. Um. Oh, can we can we hear a little bit more about it, please, Chairman? Um, okay. Um, who wants to talk a bit about it? Or do you want me to get? I, I I can mention. Um, among the other things that they do, for example, one of the good projects they did was create bird boxes in the Tate's Wood in and around Shaw Wood to sort of monitor um, a lot of the natural birds that, that were there and get an idea about the birds that uh, lived there. I, I'm not an expert on this by any stretch of the imagination, but I know in the previous council that was part of the part of the work that they did was create, create some boo bo uh, bird boxes and monitor some of the uh, um, the wildlife that were living within Tate's Wood, uh, cops, for example, mm -hmm. and stuff like that and maintaining the woodland uh, and doing other works uh, around the areas in our community. It's an important bit of work. Uh, Councillor Clark, did you, Mark Clark, do you want to add something to that? Well, it was only, only just to ask uh, uh, Councillor Mrs Clark uh, whether she might be interested in it. Rebecca? Um, well, yes, I mean, it was certainly um, fit with the um, project that we've just spoken about and actually um, since um, COVID, um, I think a lot of us have um, rediscovered some of the woodland around Hyde and Dibden, of which there is much. And um, I know that this group worked an awful lot on even some of the one, some of the pathways that have been adopted by the Greenways project even. So um, I do, I do have a, an actual interest in it. So unless anybody else would um, like to do this, well, members, I would I'm like to put myself forward. I would like to propose Rebecca. Is that uniformly agreed? I'd like to yes. second. A second, yeah. Happy with that, right? But Rebecca is our new representative, uh, and the, the Woodlands Group has done a lot of work uh, with various areas uh, in the parish in the past. So it's a good organisation to, to work with. Okay, members, right? We now have the final item: finance, uh, and I draw your attention to page twenty-one in the agenda, which is the ongoing report on the financial effects of COVID. 19 to this council's finances and you can see that there's a lot of revenue extra costs even the reported totals and we have a running total that so far uh, up to the end of uh, august it's cost us fifteen thousand three hundred eighty three pound thirty two in extra costs and lost revenue which compared to other councils uh, at higher levels is very small but isn't there still a, a, a significant amount of money okay um the three things we are is to receive an update, I've just told you about that one, to receive the bank reconciliation report from August 2020 and to receive the accounts of payment for August 2020. Do you members want to comment on the finances at all? I've got Mark Clark actually. Just a technicality, Mr Chairman, I, d I don't know. Um, bearing in mind uh, some of the sensitive nature on, on the uh, finance side, um, is this the moment that we draw the recording to a close or do you keep it open to the end of the meeting? No, Just th this, is in, this, is, this is to be kept open. Okay, thank you. This is our, our finance information is clear and transparent uh, for, for, the, for the members of the public. Fine, thank you. Are there, are there any comments? Uh, Alex, you want to say something? Yes, um, noting at the weekend that uh, we had some hirees for the Jones Lane football ground for what I believe is the first weekend post the cricket season, uh, providing some um, much needed revenue and also it's great to see some local teams out using this facility. Um, in the last week, well last few days, the new Covid restrictions have come out with regards to um, groups and events and so forth. What impact is that going to have 
on uh, our plans on parish events and hiring uh, such as the parish hall or even at some of the outdoor areas uh, moving forward um, because the numbers while obviously we understand that we've lost money due to covid in the last few months is it going to be more starker at least in the next three four months particularly with regards uh, to the parish hall uh, Tracy, do you want to answer that, please? Um, yes, well, I can understand if they're clubs that are affiliated to the Football Association um, or some other organised group, they can continue to play as long as they're COVID secure. Um, but if you just have normal groups or normal exercise groups go out onto your fields, they have to keep to the restriction of six people. And what about the parish hall? Have the new uh, restrictions impacted on any current uh, bookings in the parish hall? Yeah, now, obviously, it's have. Just... Um, obviously, Sean does oversee that, and he's been on leave this week. But I know that people were starting um, to cancel down their bookings again with the the rule of six, anyway. Mm. So, yeah, mm. it has it does have a comp. Okay. okay. We've also Thank you. Did that new. Um, I've forgotten the, the name of it now, but the um, logo that um, where you scan your phone. Um, for the track and trace, we, we've got that now for our halls and our buildings. Excellent, thank you, thank you, Tracy. Okay, um, any other comments on the uh, finance uh, members? Well, can I ask you all to uh, accept this? Uh, so proposed, right. Chairman. Can I have, 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 have you all happy through this? Thumbs up will do for this time. I'm happy to second. Good. Okay, have we all got thumbs up? Everybody, thumbs up. Come on, I want to see them all up there. Right, either manually or otherwise. Yeah, that is unanimous. Thank you very much, members. And thank you for your participation. Uh, this meeting is now drawn to conclusion. Thank you for your help and, and uh, have a good evening. But don't go because we've got the two other meetings to go, which are not televised <laughs> because they're meetings of a charity, I believe. Okay, thank you very much. Have you switched us off, Mark?